Snoke was a full sensitive male who rose to absolute power as supreme leader of the First Order during the New Republic era and after the fall of the Galactic Empire. He was a master of the Force and law. However, Snoke was secretly an artificial creation of Palpatine, created in the unknown regions. The question remains, how did Palpatine create Snoke? And the First Order for that matter? Today, we'll discover the answer. So sit back, relax, and grab yourself a giant photo of a Gungan. Welcome to Star Wars Timelines. We know Snoke was created on Exegol, and we believe it was some time prior to 19 BBY. He was most likely created towards the end of the Clone Wars. The reason we believe this to be true is we know Snoke witnessed the rise and fall of the Galactic Empire, which Sidious was ruling through his public identity, Emperor Palpatine. Now you might be asking, why, at the height of his power, did Palpatine create Snoke? The reason for this is Palpatine always thought ahead. He wanted to be as many steps as possible ahead of any potential enemies. Snoke was created for a plan that Palpatine devised for the future of the Galactic Empire in the case of his death. This plan was known as the Contingency. The plan would ensure that the Empire did not outlive him if he dies prematurely, but would also at the same time ensure the Empire's rebirth among the survivors. Palpatine had been sending scouts into the unknown regions of the galaxy for decades. During this time, he had invested extensive resources to create storehouses and laboratories in the unknown regions. No one except Palpatine knew of these. Palpatine travelled to Exegol sometime around 18 BBY and created Snoke using a similar process that they used for cloning, except Snoke was not made of anyone's genetic template in particular, but rather artificially generated tissue. He ensured that Snoke would be the perfect heir to Palpatine to take over the, during the contingency period. Thus Snoke was not a Sith, but nonetheless a master of the dark side. He was there to ensure the survivors of the Contingency would go on to continue the path of the Empire. A quick reminder guys, if possible please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me and helps me continue to make content like this. If you also have any ideas for lore videos or theories or reviews or any upcoming comics that you might like me to have a look at, please comment them in the comments down below. I'm always open to any suggestions. Again, they can literally be as wild as you want. Like, I'll literally do a lore video on what happened to Jar Jar Binks after Revenge of the Sith. He became a bit of a clown. I mean, he was a clown before, but now he's more of a clown. Ah, oh, I'll save that for the video. Comment down below if you want me to do that or something. Anyways, on to the video. Now, the first part of the contingency was the Jakku Observatory, one of many observatories Palpatine had established throughout the galaxy. Jakku would play host to an underground storehouse, which was built just over a ball hole that led directly to Jakku's core. This ball hole was crafted in 30 BBY while Palpatine was Chancellor. The plan was that the Empire and Palpatine's enemies would be lured to Jakku, where the Sith relics would be poured down into the ball hole to detonate Jakku's core, triggering a cataclysm that would destroy the planet and all grounded and orbiting enemy forces. Palpatine intended to destroy both the Empire and his enemies in one swoop. The second part of the plan involved a Jakku human native called Gallius Rax. While constructing the borehole, Gallius stumbled upon the excavation site. Palpatine sensed his presence and captured him. He offered Gallius two choices, to end his life quickly or to become Palpatine's protege. Gallius agreed to the latter. Palpatine tasked Rax with guarding the site during his absence, during which Palpatine continued to engineer his rise to power through the Clone Wars. Once the Empire had been formed, Palpatine made Rax a commander of the Naval Intelligence Service and then the rank of Fleet Admiral. In the event of his death, Palpatine ensured Rax would carry out the contingency in order to transmit the post-death orders. Palpatine had special sentinel droids built to communicate with Rax and other selected Imperial officers, such as Admiral Versio. The third part of the plan involved Rax and Palpatine's selected officers. Using information from the notes of Grand Admiral Thrawn, Rax planned to flee into the unknown regions using secret hyperspace coordinates. Rax used the notes and observatory to plot a course through the unknown regions, then arranged the Emperor's Star Destroyer, the Eclipse, to travel in advance through the plotted course where Rax planned to form the new Empire. Palpatine presumably died in 4 APY at the Battle of Endor, where immediately after, the contingency was activated. Messenger droids were sent out delivering the Emperor's final command, Operation Cinder. 
This operation began with using climate disruption arrays to attack Naboo and several other planets. Many of these planets, such as Vardos, were heavily loyal to the Empire, but were chosen anyway. At this time, Palpatine's special sentinel droids were also sent out to selected officers, including Rax, who informed them the time had come to initiate the contingency. Rax then engineered the deaths of numerous Imperial commanders and leaked information about the Imperial fleet to the New Republic, the government established by the Rebel Alliance. Rax kept the plan a very close guarded secret, even from his own subordinates, including Grand Admiral Ray Sloan. After Sloan was presumed lost or captured after an attack on the New Republic, Rax took the role as consular to the Empire, which was his role that made him the leader of the Galactic Empire. Rax ordered all Imperial forces to assemble at Jakku for a showdown with the New Republic. Rax planned to kill all members of his council prior to this, except for Brendel Hux and his son, who he regarded as essential for the New Empire. On Jakku, Rax put the final contingency phase into motion setting the stage for a massive battle. After the New Republic arrived, Rax and Hux travelled to the borehole to pull the Sith relics down to initiate the planet's destruction. However, before this could be completed, Rax was killed by Grand Admiral Sloan with the help of New Republic operatives. In his last moments, Rax told Sloan that she had now served the contingency in his place, and told her to accompany Brendel and his son to the Imperialis, where they would flee into the unknown regions through the plotted route. Even though the plot was foiled, this did bring about the defeat of the Empire. Following the Battle of Jakku, Mass Ameda formally surrendered the Empire to the New Republic. Several Imperial remnants, unaware of the contingency, held out for months following the end of the war, although they were very few in number. The old Empire eventually withered away. Meanwhile, aboard the Imperialis, a sentinel droid piloted Race alone, Brendel Hux and Armitage Hux, and several others to the Eclipse in the Unknown Regions. There. Sloan saw an opportunity to rebuild the Empire, and deemed it their first order. They began to build up their arsenal, and were later joined by other Imperial fleets who had escaped Jakku and went into hiding but were unaware of the contingency. The first order was eventually taken over by the fourth and final plan of the contingency, Snoke. Snoke's rise to power had been pre-planned by Palpatine, but was a surprise to the old Imperial leadership who joined the first order. Years later, a Cold War emerged between the New Republic and the First Order. The First Order secretly built a superweapon out of the old sacred Jedi planet Ilum. They used the weapon to destroy the New Republic and all of its forces, ensuring Palpatine's third phase of the contingency was complete. The Resistance, a group of rebels that had taken up arms against the First Order, waged war on the Order. Snoke was eventually killed by his apprentice and the son of Han Solo and Leia Organa, Ben Solo otherwise known as Kylo Ren. However, shortly after, Palpatine re-emerged in the galaxy to begin the Final Order. The Final Order was also known as the New Empire, and was the proclaimed empire of the reborn Galactic Emperor Darth Sidious. Formed through the efforts of the Sith Eternal, a sect of the Sith religion that revered the dark side of the Force, the Final Order was the culmination of an agenda over a thousand years in the making. Ultimately, the First Order's purpose was to bring the galaxy under the perpetual reign of the Sith Empire by force. With a fleet consistent of thousands of Sith Star Destroyers, the First Order gained the means to project the iron rule of the military might across the galaxy, which would transform the Hermit State into a true empire. Though Sidious considered Supreme Leader Kylo Ren and the Jedi Rey as potential heirs to the new empire, he ultimately assumed the reins of power as Emperor. However, his warships were destroyed by the Resistance and their allies, while Sidious himself was defeated by Rey and a redeemed Ben Solo. With the Final Order defeated on Exegol, the First Order's remaining forces faced a series of uprisings throughout the galaxy. Rey was fatally wounded in the process, although Ben Solo was able to resuscitate her by transferring his own life force into her body. Rey and Ben shared one final moment before the extent of Ben's injuries and the sacrifice took its toll, and Solo passed away. Rey looked on as Solo became one with the Force. And that was how Palpatine created Snoke and the First Order and why. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you.